Now we are going to look at a little chart and I feel that it is really important for us to reflect not only as teachers, but also as ICT champions. If we look at this little diagram, I want you to think of, do you think this is relevant right now to your school? Is it important at all? So I'm just going to pull it up for you quickly. So this chart says there is a common mission and there are three things that belong to that. Then there is a climate of conducive learning or two conducive learning and there's one, two, three, four, five things attached to that. And then there is an emphasis on learning and they have one, two, three, four things attached to that. Because this chart shows us the characteristics of an effective school. And we need to think about how we can possibly apply this if you find it relevant. If we can apply this to the development of our ICT committee. This is a study that has been around for a long time. There are things from 1963 that's based on this chart even as earlier as 1996, even as earlier now as 2001, where people still think that this is relevant to the development of a effective school. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it's going to guide you to build on something or to address something that is lacking, to look for some new opportunities and to minimize risks. If you know what risks are out there, you already know how to mitigate them. You already know what you could possibly put in place to make sure that that doesn't take place. You need to spend at least five minutes on your school, your school's situation, your school SWOT analysis. So you are going to use this to decide on your strategy moving forward. So the strengths and the weaknesses are internal factors. So what do you have internally? What do you have that is a strength? What is a weakness? So do you have amazing teachers? Do you have positivity? Mm -hmm. So anything internal, you're demotivated, you don't have technology, you don't have a plan, you don't have a committee. That would be one of your weaknesses. Then you have some um, threats and opportunities. So an opportunity is something that is external. So yes, you may have a good parenting body or a good governing body, but do you have any people in that governing body who have any connections outside who can help the school? And then again, a threat would be something that you don't really have control over. So that would be where the school is. You can't change where the school is. You can't change the community. You can try. So I want you to take a few minutes with your colleagues right now and go through your own SWOT analysis. Think that this, this is the minimum amount of people who should be in your ICT committee because it really is too much for one person. And eventually you become the person who annoys everybody else because you are, you it looks as though you are the one who's pushing everything and it shouldn't be that way. You should have an SMT member or a principal, a deputy principal who is with you, who is going to stand with you and make sure and make sure that you are um, heard, that whatever plans you have in place are happening and taking place and there's a way for everybody to know what's going on. You need a teacher who has the IT skills. That person who knows the ICT champion website, who knows how to reset the, the passwords, who knows how to create all of these um, groups and all of these things depending on if your school is going Microsoft or Google. So if you want to have Google Classroom or, or um, Microsoft, if you want to go in that regard, yes. you 
teams. Oh my word, we're using it right now. So if you want, you need somebody that's strong in that regard, then you might also need somebody who is an innovation leader. So that might be somebody is the one who is talking to the other schools to to create your PLNs or if you have the coding and robotics at your school as a pilot, you are driving it and you are making sure that that your other colleagues are aware of it as well. And then you have the other teacher who is in charge of TPD or who is thinking about TPD or is championing TPD. You are going to think about those people that you have put in those teams. What do you think the responsibility is? So initially now we spoke about we want somebody who is responsible for professional development and we need an SMT member, an innovation leader or the coding and robotics person. And we need somebody with a good ICT skills. What do you think their responsibilities will be? But if I'm in charge of teacher professional development, my main responsibility is I must liaise with the e-learning team to find out about training opportunities. That's my main goal. Or my main responsibility. Write down what is the person for teacher to professional development? What are your roles? What is your role? So, I hope you've been looking at the chat to get a few responsibilities. Anybody want to tell us some responsibilities? Anybody who's willing to share? You don't need to put up your hand. You can just unmute yourself and give us your three responsibilities for, let's say, for teacher professional development. Anybody? What would the three core responsibilities be to the ICT committee? Afternoon, Melissa. Hi. Can I answer for the TPD? Of course I, you may. I think the teacher professional development is the one that's supposed to run mini workshop with the educators within yes. the school, knowing that not all <laughs> of us are ICT equipped. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Is there anything else anybody else wants to add to that? Good afternoon. Afternoon. I think there must be one who is, who is in management. Because who whenever is? somebody who is in the management uh, department. At school, like an SMT member. The SMT members. And why is that, sir? It's because the I find that the SMT, if the SMT doesn't command anything about the ICT, the ICT collapsed down. That is the only the thing that experience it. So the SMT must be involved, or the deputy principal must be more involved in the ICT must be a member of the ICT committee. Thank you so much, sir. I fully agree with you. And we found that at schools where the principal or the deputy principal is really involved, that is where we find a lot of innovation taking place. That is not necessarily the rule that if uh, there is a um, deputy principal or SMT member available, that it does work. But what we found generally is that that is what drives the the ICT adoption at the school and the, the ICT committee as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm the IT um, IT manager and I, I, I run the um, IT committee and one of my main roles is, is budgeting <laughs> the financial side. So that's very important as well. So now colleagues, I want to take us back to this one. If you have that team who have a common mission, you know what you want. Eventually, we're going to get there. We're getting to that next week. <laughs> so don't forget your SWOT analysis. We're going to use it again next week. 
we can eventually get to this where we have a school that is effectively using technology not just for show you're using it effectively because it enhances learning for the learners and it doesn't only uh, serve a purpose of oh no we've got it we must mu- we just have to use it there is a process there is a way that you are thinking about everything and that is what we try to establish here so we started off here with this image then we went to our SWOT analysis and you thought about your school and your context and now you're thinking about the people who you can have within that team the people who are going to help make your school a school that embraces technology 